How's it going guys? I'm Theojo, and if you've been following tech news at all, you may have noticed that Microsoft has, over the past year or so, been really pushing a new feature for Windows 10 called Windows Mixed Reality. And it's basically like virtual reality, but they're calling it mixed reality. And the idea is that they're selling headsets, kind of like this one that I have right here. And these are from third party manufacturers, but they can be used with Windows natively. They have the native mixed reality environment, which is like a Windows 10 kind of virtual world, like a virtual desktop almost. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, kind of how it works, if these headsets are worth it, how they work, and all that. First of all, a little bit about these headsets. They are from different manufacturers, which include Acer, which is the one I have. They have HP, Samsung, Lenovo, and probably many more coming soon. And these are significantly cheaper than the previous price points of what you would get for other virtual reality headsets like Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. These are all in the four to $500 price range and they also include a pair of motion controllers. So these are the controllers that they come with. And actually when I pre-ordered my headset a while back, several months ago, it only came with the headset, but I got a pleasant surprise when Microsoft emailed me saying that anyone who pre-ordered the headset before they were including these, they just sent out a pair of these for free. So that was really nice. In addition to the controllers, you can also use like voice commands. So the headsets typically also have a microphone jack as well as a headphone jack built in so you can use earbuds and then if the earbuds have a microphone port on them you can use that as well and you might be wondering how these are different from the other virtual reality headsets like oculus and htc vive which are really high end and the main difference is that these use inside out tracking which is unlike the Oculus and HTC, which use outside in with cameras that you have to set up. Whereas this has two cameras on the front and it detects the environment around you and uses that to track. It's very similar to HoloLens, same idea, except this is tracked and connected through a computer. And I must say that the inside out tracking is really good. It's almost, if not just as good as with the Oculus and the HTC, which do use those external cameras. And the good thing about that is that it makes this extremely portable. You don't have to carry around these external cameras and set them up and plug them into the computer. You can literally just plug this into any computer that supports it, even a laptop, and carry that around. And you can also do both room scale and sitting with this. So during the setup, you have the option to choose one of those two. And if you do room scale, you basically just move this thing around the boundaries and that sets it up. So it's really awesome that they have this technology and it's at a pretty decent price point. However, that being said, it's not perfect. There are some disadvantages, which I'll get to in a little bit. that are specific to this headset and I'm assuming the other ones, but let's keep going in regards to what this hardware is all about. With the controllers, the tracking on these are actually really good and you can see how it works. There's these lights that uh, light up all around the outside and the inside of this ring and then you have these controls. There's a touchpad, there's a joystick, a couple of menu buttons, a trigger, and a side grip button. And the tracking, like I just mentioned, is really good and probably on the same level maybe as the HTC Vive. Again, a little bit less because it's optical, whereas the HTC Vive really does lasers, which I think is probably a little bit superior. However, this is not noticeably worse. But another thing to note is that these lights are basically seen by the headset and then use that to track, which means that these have to be in view of the headset. So if you move them to your side or something, then the headset doesn't know where they are. But the idea is that, well, if you're gonna be using them, you'd probably have to have them on the screen anyway. So it's not that big a deal. I've never needed to use it in the couple of times I've tried it when it wasn't in view. Though it does seem to have a pretty good range to it. Like you can hold it all the way up here, out here. It doesn't have to be directly in front of it at all. Though another important thing to note is that at the moment you have to use these with a mixed reality headset. You can't use these, for example, with the Oculus Rift because the Oculus doesn't have this remote programmed into their software. And even if you're using Oculus with Steam VR, you still have to have the Oculus software installed because it uses that external camera to track it. However, even if you were to load the mixed reality headset software into Steam VR, which you can do, you can't just use this standalone because you would need to have 
the headset to track this and use it. So hopefully that makes sense. It's not a limitation of the whole headset. It just makes sense that if you're gonna be tracking this, you have to use something to track it. And going back to the headset, the hardware on that uses 1440p panel. So it's 1440 by 1440. I believe for each eye is what the specs implied. And then it also has 90 Hertz, which is really important to get butter smooth experience. You know, phone VR has like 60 Hertz, which is truly garbage. You know, this is way better than what you get on phone VR. So that is really nice that they have that 90 Hertz. Now I did say this thing wasn't perfect and there are a few things I don't really like, but it does have to do with the hardware specifically. So theoretically there could be other headsets that come out that work much better. But the first thing is that the field of focus on this headset is very small. So the field of view is not what I'm talking about, but rather the field of focus where you have to look directly at something or else it'll be blurry and everything else is blurry around that. So when it is in focus, when you are looking directly at something, it does look good and sharp, but just the chromatic aberration from the lens makes everything else kind of look smeared. It's not really that great. Also with the field of view, it's much smaller than what you would get with the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. Now those were much more expensive headsets, although the Oculus Rift has been having a pretty good sale recently, but still, it is almost like you're looking through a pair of goggles, whereas on the Rift, for example, you know, it actually feels like you're in there after a little while, whereas this is almost like you're looking through a window, and especially combined with the small field to focus and it doesn't feel that great but it's better than nothing especially at that price point and you kind of get used to it also another thing i don't like is the headset is really not very comfortable at all it doesn't have much adjustment the only adjustment you have is the tightness around the band so you can see here it's just one band around the back of your head whereas the vive and the rift have one at the top as well which kind of helps hold the front of the headset up a little bit so it doesn't press down on your nose but this does kind of press down your nose, it almost pushes down your face. Really not comfortable at all, I would say. But again, these are technically developer editions, so it's not like a complete consumer product that is supposed to be perfect and super comfortable and user-friendly. So I'm gonna give it a pass on that. I mean, for what it is, it's a really good device. It basically has really good refresh rate that a consumer would need, and it is sharp enough where it's usable and good enough for developing on. Now, when it comes to mixed reality as a whole for Windows, I would say it's not really that useful at the moment. I mean, you have the mixed reality environment, which is like a virtual home, but I don't really see the point. It's not any more convenient than just using a regular screen how you normally would. You kind of have to teleport around and like look at stuff and click it, and then it's hard to look at the stuff because you have to get super close. It's not very sharp. I don't really see the use case of this at all at the moment. It's kind of just like a gimmick almost, but I will say that for video games, it is great, and that's always an awesome use for VR. And I kind of touched on this, but it does allow you to use this with Steam VR. So, you know, Steam VR also supports the Oculus Rift as well as the HTC, which is native, and you can also use this headset along with those controllers together in any Steam VR game, as long as it supports it. As I said before, you can only use the controllers if you're also using the headset in Steam VR, but still, that's really awesome that at this point, you can get a pretty reasonable price point on these. So why don't we quickly go over the kind of stuff I talk about and some general conclusions. I basically think that Windows Mixed Reality is really cool, and I'm sure that there will be cool uses for it in the future. Of course, it is in developer stages right now, so you can't expect much, much from it, but the gaming aspect is really awesome. So if you really want to get into uh, VR gaming and you really need to pinch pennies on it, this could be an option, although I still think that the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive are gonna be a lot, a lot better than this for gaming specifically. But if you are some kind of developer or you're thinking about writing apps that have to do with mixed reality or you just actually wanna use Windows Mixed Reality for some reason, then this is a good option and it's a cheap option that does work. The hardware is decent, it's good enough, it's not perfect, but again, as long as it has 90 Hertz, good resolution, which it does, and it has a reasonable focus area, I mean, it's a headset that you can't knock for being what it is. 
So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments and I might make more videos in the future if we get more updates that are really awesome to Windows Mixed Reality or maybe some awesome new headsets as well. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking the bell or YouTube's algorithm literally might not even show you new videos even if you do subscribe. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys, so thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.